next step after love to is called to. My call to is a sense of and him I, is my love. The next step after love to is called to. My call to is a sense of service. My call to is a sense of service. I am born for this. I'm supposed to be doing this. This ain't about a check. It's not about accolades. Nothing I have ever done in my life gives me the fulfillment of what it is I'm called to do. I roll over in the middle of the night and I think of a better way to do what I'm doing. I get irritated with folk who take the privilege for granted and, and do the job sloppily as if it don't matter. It bothers me and gets under my skin when people handle the sacred as if it's a secular job. This ain't something just anybody can do, but God bless me to do it even when my hands are dirty, even when my lifestyle is a mess. I I am grateful to do it because I'm, I'm called. I'm called to do it. I'm called to do it. Hallelujah. Your soul yearns to hear the confirmation out of your voice. I just need five of y'all to shout out loud. I'm called to do this. This is not what I chose. This is not what I would have picked. This is not where I saw myself. But while I was in my mother's womb, he had plans for me. I am called for this. Your assignment this year is to find what you are called to do. <laughs> I feel glory right here. I need you to just lift up that hand. I, I want you to open up your mouth, even if you're in the midst of a career change. God, don't let Easter come with me just getting another job. I want to be walking in the full manifestation of what I was called to do. I'm waiting to hear the sound of worshipers. I want every demon, every witch, every warlock that has been assigned to distract me. Let them die a cruel death so that they will not be able to sleep comfortably until I fulfill the assignment I was born to be in. Hey, I feel this glory. I dare you to open up your mouth, not for cars, not for houses, not for a ring. Would you shout, not for money, but I'm shouting for my call. I'm shouting for my assignment. I'm giving him glory for the gift that I never even prayed for. It ain't what I call like to do. It's what I'm called. Make me see that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Uh, hallelujah. I feel glory here. Hallelujah. Thomas, put your foot on the brake. With no music for just 30 seconds, would you just open your mouth like you in the car by yourself? Hey. 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 Hey, 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 I need to hear the sound of a travail. Hey, I know we don't use this word anymore, but I need to hear the sound of a lamentation. Hey, I need you to open up your mouth. My soul loves Jesus. Not my mouth. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his holy name. 
Hallelujah. 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 Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm trying to get out of here, but my surfboard is still out. You might as well ride the wave. I want you to worship him, hear me, even if what you're called to do don't pay you a whole lot of money. I can't hear nobody, even if what you're called to do don't match your degree. Even with what you're called to do, there is no job description. Even if what you're called to do makes you work under somebody you don't even respect. Even. When you find out your because, you will discover your blessing. When you find your because, you will discover your blessing. Once upon a time in 1 Samuel 17, um, there was a young, young man by the name of David. You're not going to believe it, but um, David is anointed. He's got purpose. He has a call. He has an assignment. He has unparalleled gifting. And David is working for Uber Eats. He got all of that on him. And his father got him delivering sandwiches. What do you do when you are anointed and you got to do a job that's beneath you? God, I can't hear nobody. What happens when you got a skill set, but your skill set has not had a collision with an opportunity? What, what happens when people try to treat you common when you know that there's something exemplary on your life? What happens when it's hard to figure out what's the difference? between being humble and being humiliated. And his father sends him on an errand to deliver cheese sandwiches. And he did it! Stay with me. Because he chose to. He says, I'm going to deliver these cheese sandwiches because my family needs me. Because they asked me to do it. Because I'm responsible, because I am accountable. Because I am of the lineage that I don't debate with the Father. If the Father asks me to do it, I'm humble enough to do it. I'm going to ask just nine of you in the room, can you do ministry that bears no glory? Most people only want to do ministry when there's a stage and a microphone involved. Can you do ministry if God is calling you to clean bathrooms? Can you do ministry if your job is to walk the seniors to their car? Can you do ministry if they just ask you to drive around the church at 3 a.m. to make sure no burglars and no vandalists are there? Can you do ministry if you can never get a one-on-one -on -one with the bishop? Can you do ministry if there is no glory? David gets there, and he overhears this Goliath talking smack, defaming the name of our God, making a mockery of those who serve him. And a promise goes out, whoever kills Goliath will not have to pay taxes, will get married to the king's daughter, and will live in a mansion. David asks, am I really going to get all of this to do it? I got to jump over to the story to tell somebody this. That's all that David was promised. And he never got the mansion. God help me. 
never became tax free, but still served. This is only for the mature people. Can you serve God even when the folk at the church didn't deliver what they promised? This ain't the pay we agreed to. This is not the deal that we had. This is not the conditions I am used to. People in corporate treat me and respect me better than this. Will you still do the job? When he heard Goliath disrespecting our God, he then changed his course and said, I am not doing it for the cash. David said something. Bishop, I hope you'll invite me next year. I'll have a better sermon. He said, I am doing this, hear this, even though my own family doesn't understand my motives. It wasn't people in the street. It's people from his house who said, you only doing this because you conceded. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You really are not fully anointed until you've been misunderstood by people who you were raised with. I need five of y'all who know your greatest level of warfare is not from strangers. It is not from co-workers. Ain't no white supremacist ever said nothing, but it's Negroes in your family who will try to undermine and belittle the choice you made to be obedient to your assignment. And he finally made, he finally made the critical decision, which is yours tonight. He says, I am about to kill this giant. Not because I want to. Hallelujah. Not even because I have to. Because the giant never threatened me. God, help me. <laughs> Not because I have to. I'm going to leave this and go on back home. Not even because I love to. Because I never have to fight no giant before. I am killing this giant tonight. Because I am called to handle big things. Small stuff is not my assignment. But I need those of y'all in this room who know that there is a prompting in your ghost that tells you I was born to conquer something big. If you believe small is your destiny, this night of worship ain't for you. But if you know you were born to conquer something big, I need you to open up your mouth until something big falls right at your feet. All small-minded people, be quiet. But those of you that know, there's a giant slaying anointing that rests in my paws. A giant slaying anointing that runs through my veins. God said, I need you to cry out loud until something big drops. I need you to scream out loud until everything you were born to do falls prostrate. Let the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth. Cry out on our God. I woke up like this. I woke up like this. I woke up like this. Look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved. I'm sanctified. And tonight, I kill something big. Dream center, you were born for this. New birth, 